I don't stand before anybody saying I'm perfect. In fact, I often say it's not about perfection, it's about direction. And so, and so I'm, I'm, I'm on the same journey that men and women are of developing and, and being aware of my character and, and then trying to equip people with biblical principles to, to live that out. Hi, and welcome to this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. I'm Byron Tyler. Glad you could join us today as we welcome our guest, Rod Handley. Rod is the founder and president of Character That Counts. Ministry was established back in July of 2000. He's authored over 20 books, uh, previously served as senior vice president and COO, CFO for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We know a wonderful ministry uh, all around, not in the, just in the country, but all around the world. And so, Rod, good to have you here in Memphis. Good to be here. I know we're taping our program, but uh, you have a, an event you'll be at tonight with, I believe, Faith Baptist. Is that correct? It's actually Bartlett Baptist. Bartlett Baptist. There's a lot of Baptists, and they have a lot of different That's you know, right. faith in Bartlett. But, hey, we're, I'm sure the folks at Bartlett have faith, too, though. <laughs> That's right. I guess uh, they, they do a thing called Man Church, so I'm going to speak to their men tonight. So oh, it's going to be a pretty, pretty exciting night. Well, we're glad you're in town. We have a mutual friend, David Sitton, who's brought you by the studio this afternoon. I know you've been on kind of a whirlwind of a tour as you've been here in Memphis. Is this your first time in town? Oh, no. I've been here many times. I've spoken at Germantown Baptist and uh, Bellevue Baptist and uh, Central Baptist. And so, yeah, we've <laughs> you got a great city here. Love always coming back to town. Now, we have, we have a connection here now. Uh, Kansas City is where our home base is. Bot Radio Network started there back 54 years ago, 1962. And uh, is that home for you, Kansas City? It is now. Yeah, I moved there in 1989. Thought I was coming for two years, and I've been there 26. So yeah, it's a it's a great city, and I know the Bot family real well. And, and you've been to some of their events, and you help kind of co- coordinate some events together too, I believe. Yeah, the Bot's been great supporters and sponsors of a lot of uh, events that we've done together. And the one we're working on currently is our Faith and Family Day with the Royals, and and the Bot Radio Network is a is a huge part of that, and we actually had a luncheon yesterday in town that I couldn't attend. <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway, it was it, it went well well without me. In addition, right, I understand that you have served or currently serving as the chaplain uh, for the Seattle SuperSonics and also for the World Series champion Kansas City Royals. Well, the Sonics uh, no longer exist. Uh, they're, oh, now that's the, yeah. they're now the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah. So I don't quite do their chapel now, but uh, during the days they were in Seattle, I was their guy and also worked with the Mariners and Seahawks in those Seattle years. And now when I moved to Kansas City, I got involved with the Chiefs and the Royals and they've had a had a good long history with the Royals as okay, well. Okay, now when, when, when the game final game was over with and they were declared the World Series, I mean, were you in the dugout? Oh, were you no, in the no, stands? no, Where no. Were I was, you? I was in, my, in my home. You were in, at home. I was at home. The, that was in New York, so I didn't go back to New York, but a lot of our friends did, and, and obviously was thrilled that so many, many people uh, had, had, had languished for 30 years, uh, the, just misery. It was a miserable run. But uh, their GM is a just a solid man of God. He put together a tremendous squad, real servant leader. I mean, it's just a testimony to uh, the ownership and the organization. And, and my role now is really more limited. Uh, I stepped down to the chaplain from that a few years ago, but my role now is really with the Faith and Family event. You know, Ron, there was uh, a very famous person, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., that uh, was assassinated here in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, one of the famous speeches, he said he was looking for a day when men would be judged by the character of their heart, not the color of their skin. And, uh, you know, character is something that is uh, of high value, but we, we sometimes don't see a lot of it in today, you know. And so I know your ministry is kind of focused, centered on this whole area of character. And uh, we want to talk about that today, a character that counts. Yeah. Uh, back up. Tell me the backstory first of all. I mean, where, where, where did Rod begin? Well, I was a character. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say I did, made all the right decisions and right choices. So, you know, I think a lot of times our character is not built through our successes, but through our failures, our disappointment, through adversity, through turmoil and trials. And uh, uh, when I when I was living in Seattle, and I, and I, I tell this story so many times. Uh, uh, I was, I was, I loved Jesus and I had some really cool things I was doing in ministry with the fellowship of Christian athletes and sports teams and the chapels and all that kind of stuff. But I was leading a double life. Uh, I was, I was, I was portraying one image in public and another image in private. And, um, and I did not, uh, uh have my breakthrough or my change 
until I discovered the word accountability. When I moved to Kansas City, I, I entered into an accountable relationship, and the, all of a sudden it, it really became focused that uh, if I was going to uh, truly be an accountable man, that there were some character adjustments that needed to take place. And so uh, when, that, when, that, when those things begin to occur and it became more than just the lingo of, of, of being the right person but really living the right way, um, that, that was the genesis of this whole character uh, journey. So I don't stand before anybody saying I'm perfect. In fact, I often say it's not about perfection, it's about direction. And so, and so I'm, I'm, I'm on the same journey that men and women are of, of developing and, and being aware of my character and, and then trying to equip people with biblical principles to, right. to live that out. Well, you know, Rod, I think ultimately, as humans, we're trapped by the sinful nature. You Absolutely. Know? We can't get away from it, you know. And the redeeming factor, of course, is our faith in Jesus Christ, the, the new life that he offers us, you know, through his sacrifice on the cross. But I was just thinking the fact that I think you probably see this, don't you? That many, what we, we would see successful men, even women too, uh, and, and maybe have strong outward stories for Jesus Christ, and like yet inwardly there's the character flaw, and they, and they feel boxed and maybe frustrated, and and probably feel like a a pretty pretty bad person, maybe just like a hypocrite. Total you know? hypocrite, total. And, yeah. and, and maybe even question, am I really a Christian? Am I, am I really, you know, do I really have a thing going with God if I'm, if I'm living this way? But it's, it's, been a, it's been going on for so long. How do you stop? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love what John Eldred says. He says, we fake it till we make it. Yeah. And so the image that we portray is one thing, but I think down deep, we're, we're really unsettled in our soul. And, and for me, one of, the, one of the questions that haunted me during those years where I was living that double life was waking up thinking, will today be the day people find out who I really am? And uh, that's, by the way, not a great way to live life. That is, uh, and, and I think to a certain degree, there's a lot of people, if they really do that self-inventory, or, or one of the same thing, can I keep juggling all these balls and give the, the, the portraying of, of an image of, of a persona? And they deep down inside know. And so for me, when I finally was able to take that real hard examination when I had now some accountability partners that were also that I invited into my world that I was now reporting my life it became very evident that wow I've got uh, I've got I've got some 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 things that that God can do and, and the cool part about this is uh, his redemption his grace his mercy his forgiveness uh, it exploded in my life yeah, but then, then, Rod, you have to become a, a vulnerable person. You have to become a transparent person, you know? Which is brand new for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's new for all of us. Ultimately, yeah. you, know, you know, we know who we are deep inside. Or, or we think we know. But having that, like you said, the team of people around you who that you are accountable to for how you do what you do, you know? Yeah, I, I tell people many times uh, it's it's being honest with God, honest with others, honest with yourself, and actually the most difficult one of the three is self. Uh, we know God knows, and you know if a couple of people know, it's one thing, but do we really, really take that inside look? And and then uh, you know today uh, I can tell you firsthand that there's a freedom, there's a joy, there's a peace uh, that I certainly didn't have 25 plus years ago that uh, God has has, do, has done and is doing. And then to, to to go out and communicate that to people of all um, you know ages, people of all races, uh, you know, male, I mean, it just crosses so many barriers. And and to and and again, not to stand before them and say, hey, you know, I've got it all figured out, but but to say through Christ, He can He can fix you too. And that's ultimately what 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 I what I see happening. It just is. It's been unbelievable. You know, I was just thinking about a verse where Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And uh, dealing with the truth is a very difficult place to come to sometimes. Uh, you just quoted one of my favorite verses. And, in fact, if, uh, that's one of the verses we're going to camp on tonight with the men that I'm going to be speaking to. And uh, speaking the truth is the only way you will ultimately get the freedom that you're looking for. You and your wife, Jana, uh, you've been married for how long? 24 years. And how did you meet Miss Jana? Uh, Jana was a medical missionary in Yemen. Uh, twin, I had a twin sister that came to a singles Bible study that I hosted, and so we prayed for this gal on the other side of the planet in our study for a long time. When she finally relocated back to the state, she moved in with her twin sister. Um, funny story: I, I, I was invited to a wedding 
The guy said, you can't come without a date. Um, I asked one gal. She said no. I asked another gal. She said no. I finally said, well, the new girl moved into town. I'll ask her and had a delightful experience. And we were engaged a few months later and married with, within uh, seven, eight months after that. Now, are you that. sure you married the right one? I did. You married, you married the twin sister. But here's the crazy part. We actually uh, introduced my a friend of the twin, and we got engaged on the same night. We planned that out, and then we asked the girls – what do you want to do? You have your own special day. You want to have a double wedding and they wanted to have a double wedding. So, oh my. so yeah, dad came down the aisle, one in each arm and I did get uh, the one I wanted. God is good. He is good. His timing's perfect. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Let's talk about, uh, uh, character counts, character that counts. Yes. Uh, tell me about the, uh, the beginning of it. Uh, why, how did you, how, why did you leave FCA? How did that all come about? Well, I loved I loved my time with FCA, and it, it, I had a wonderful job. I was the number two guy there, and, and was really uh, doing what I wanted to do. Um, um, you know, I mean, reading the, reading the sports page is part of my job description. I mean, what could be better than that <laughs> for a guy who loves sports? But but I, uh, uh, I I ended up writing a book about my character experiences called Character Counts: Who's Counting Yours, and it was really describing the accountability process. And this was probably seven, eight, ten years into my FCA, I wrote this book. And, uh, and of course, I was invited because of my position with FCA to come and speak at men's conferences and retreats and banquets. And the guy would always say, you know, uh, speak your heart. Whatever God's laid in your heart, speak about. Well, I'd say, well, can I talk about accountability? Oh, sure. You know, we haven't heard of that talk before. And so, so I'm speaking to all these groups, and they're saying, uh, well, where'd you get this material? And I'm, well... I, I, it's just personal experience. And they said, you ought to write a book. And so after I wrote this book on accountability, uh, literally the, the Pandora's box opened with just numerous opportunities. And I'm trying to juggle my role being an executive with FCA and yet have this passion about this subject that seems to be resonating with men, women, and teenagers. And so, uh, in the year 2000, I, 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 I jumped off the cliff <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'd always had to raise my own support with FCA, but now I didn't have the, a national organization to cling my hat on. Now I was stepping out and saying, uh, people, would you support uh, this effort to talk about three words, character, integrity, accountability. And funny, funny story. Uh, at the time I, I left FCA, um, I, I reported actually to the chairman of the board of FCA. So I had a, a direct relationship with Tom Landry and Tony Dungy and Bobby Bowden and these heroes of mine. And, and I told them I was leaving uh, to launch this new work. And they, they didn't know what to do. I mean, they're kind of like, they're kind of, well, okay, we'll clap for you. I mean, and then I, I stepped in the hallway and had the meeting after the meeting. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but then they tell you what they really think. And there was a dentist from Nebraska that pulled me aside in the hallway and said, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Character, integrity, accountability. Those are, those are common sense words. He says, 30 days from now, you'll be back here begging for your job back. Wow. And you know what? Uh, 30 days later, I was wondering, what have I done? I mean, because the phone wasn't ringing. And and this this plentiful supply of things I thought I was going to be doing looked bare. And I was saying, Lord, have I made a mistake? I mean, is this really what you called me to do? And 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 through a series of, of just very, very deep intercession, very prayerful time in the scripture, God began to map out uh, kind of the the game plan of how this was going to work. And so I'll fast forward 16 years later, we've seen God's faithfulness. And ironically, that very dentist who kind of challenged me uh, five years after uh, he said that, he asked me to come to his church and speak to his church (laughs) about character, integrity, accountability. So, you know, I think God has a sense of humor, but extremely faithful. We've got a great staff that I've do this work with. Um, we've got a, a wonderful team. I average about 250 speaking engagements a year. Uh, I think you know I've published about 20 different books yeah. now. On the and so uh, and and the audiences I get to speak in uh, literally are scattered all over the country. We've even done some work uh, in third world countries uh, with our materials and, and training leaders on on the very things we're talking about today. And. And uh, I'm just, uh, I just, it's, it's, I sometimes I pinch myself and say, wow, God, you are so faithful. When it comes to teaching, uh, talking about character, talking about that, when as it comes to the business world, you, you mentioned leaders, what are some of the challenges that leaders typically have to overcome when they're dealing with issues of character? 
Well, I think leaders are some of the loneliest people on the planet, uh, and, and by virtue of the fact that they're you know got the, the the job titles, the degrees, the the resume, all that, and so uh, this whole concept of being accountable is a foreign language to them because. Uh, hey, I, I got myself here. I, I pulled myself up my own bootstraps. I, you know, I founded this organization. What do you mean? I need a team. And so, for them to really uh, become a servant leader, for them to really say, I need to communicate, for them to begin to to look for opportunities to uh, give their life away, to not be selfish but s- selfless, uh, it is challenging to be a leader. And I love being with leaders because when they get it. Not only does does their uh, do they do they grow personally, but their team grows, their organization grows. Yeah, you know, it, it, here's two is better than one. Well, and, and I started <laughs> I started with leaders because I think it, there's that there's a trickle down. You know, I mean, we need leaders that we can look at and say there's a person with character, and they got vision and they got passion. Yeah. You need that, yeah. no question. But if that's all you got and you don't have the a, a team and a servant leader team around you, you, you won't you won't, you can't do it. You just can't do it. Well, as you implement the character that counts, as you as you bring the vision into companies, and I guess it's not just companies. You talk to ministries too, uh, schools, corporations, sports teams. Uh, you know, and I and I love what I like. I'm doing tonight. I love being in a church setting with men. Uh, you know, and I, and we do a lot of couples things. We do a lot of a young adult and, and teenager. But when I get a chance to be with men. Because men have influence, they have impact. You can get a heart of a man, and you can really teach them these these principles. Uh, their family wins, the city wins, their churches win. I mean, uh, and men, and men are tough. They're tough, but I love the challenge of getting with men. Maybe some men listening today can really really relate to as you shared your story when you were kind of living a, a double life. You know, because I, I think a, a lot of folks and we we have a tendency to do that. You know. Because we don't want people to see our weakness, to see our flaws, you know. And we, we, we have an image that we want people to see who we are. But, you know, when we're at home or, you know, we're away, uh, that's not who we really are. Well, my dad coached me as a little boy. He said, never share your weaknesses. They'll, they'll use that against you. And so, yeah, I had a, had a dad who was proclaiming <laughs> the very antithesis of what I'm talking about today. I mean, uh, you know, my mentality today is I need you, you need me, we need one, one another. And, uh, and so that's very, very, very foreign. And, but uh, again, the power of when that takes place is pretty transformational. And, I, and I'll say this, and I'm glad you brought up, you know, it, 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 you know, we've got a public world, we've got a personal world, we've got a private world. And that personal world, we're, we're with our family, close friends. You know, are they see, what are they seeing as well? And I've always felt like from the get-go that the greatest character development I need to have is with my wife and my kids. You know, if I'm, if I'm winning out there and I'm not winning at home, shame, shame yeah. on me. You know, that's so, great... so we have, we have spent just, I can't tell you the, the amount of hours and the amount of time on our knees and the amount of time just coaching and mentoring and walking with our kids. And, and I'm thrilled to tell you that uh, I've got a 22-year-old daughter. Actually, lives in Nashville. Works at Vanderbilt's and RN. She is solid. Uh, last summer, one of her goals was to memorize the entire book of First Peter, which she did. I mean, just loves the Word of God. Loves memorizing the Word of God. My son is a is a leader at a camp called Canacuck. Joe White's Joe, Joe White's, White's, White's country, yeah. and he's a he's one of the the top college leaders. My got a son at Missouri State as a freshman that is making tremendous decisions. And, uh, and, and we don't pat ourselves on the back, but we do say we trusted God. We, 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 we did the work we needed to do there. We want to make sure that we're winning at home and not just winning out there. Reflecting back on a, a period of time when I used to teach uh, youth, you know, the high school age in a Sunday school class, and we would be dealing with certain topics about the, the you know, how we should, uh, certain character issues that we should have. And oftentimes I remember the students would say, hey, you know what? I'll deal with that issue when my mom or dad do. That's right. That's a bad indictment on us as parents, you know, Rod. I mean, the fact that our kids, sometimes we are the roadblock. I mean, we're wanting our kids, we're telling our kids to don't do that, to change this, when oftentimes we're doing the same thing. 
Oh boy, you're 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 now. I mean, this is exactly what we 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 teach and preach to not only to the men on that side, but we also the the, the pushback we get from teenagers is, I will be interested in this when I see mom and dad doing it. So yeah, this is this is exactly what what we what we try to to, to work on. You said over 200 uh, venues per year that yeah. you are sharing <laughs> character that counts. I mean, uh, yeah, and there's and there's a couple seasons that are real busy, and, and this is one of those we're in seasons. It right now. Oh yeah. How do you stay motivated? What drives Rod to do what you do? Change lives. I mean, really, when I see people getting it and implementing it, not just hearing the words, but actually the implementation, absolutely fires me up. I just totally, totally love. Uh, whether I'm in Maine or, or, the, or Minnesota or Texas, and, and you see the light bulbs go on, and you see and you begin to hear the stories, the feedback. Hey, I, because because when we like when we do a, a conference retreat, I tell everybody you have enough information right now to to bring change. Yeah, I, I we, we we give them uh, questions. We give them accountability questions. We here's the questions you need to be at. We tell them how to find the people that they're going to be interacting with. We we actually during the course of the weekend retreats actually put them into groups, and some of those groups even walk away saying, "Okay, this group has been meeting all weekend. See you guys at Monday morning at McDonald's. We're we don't need more information. We got it. Yeah. And then for me to get the feedback on the backside, oh gosh, it just music to my ears. You know, I was just thinking about us as a society and just how powerful character and good character is for to, to be in a healthy people, you know? And, I mean, we're, we're living in a day, as we mentioned, you know, where character doesn't seem to be on a priority list, you know, for, for, the, for the most part. And, uh, and, and it, it affects all aspects of our life, you know? I was in a, a coffee shop the other day, and even the, the, the way the waitress was responding or the, you know, attendant was responding to me, was was I didn't feel it was appropriate, you know. I didn't I didn't see that I was getting the treatment because I used to manage a, a restaurant business, so I'm, I'm very pretty knew, yeah. pretty big on that, you know, yeah. how you treat a customer, and you know we've we've lost some of that basic respect for each other, you know. We've actually identified about 120 different character words that, and we teach and preach and 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 do like I say weekend seminars and all kinds of of different deals on those words. And, uh, and, and the reality is, is you're never going to fulfill all those words trying to just muster up your own strength. Yeah. Uh, you need the Lord, you need a team of people around you. You need, you know, uh, put yourself in vulnerable positions where you can actually kind of learn how to, how to do that. And, and, uh, we're all in process in this, every single one of us. Do you feel the church has, has really maybe missed the, the mark on some of this area when it comes to that? I mean, you know, we, we preach it from the pulpits, but the accountability doesn't, when it comes to the congregation itself, we don't really see that a lot. One of my pet peeves is uh, you walk through a church, uh, you know, got the, the smile on, everything looks fine, and the question is asked, so how you doing? And what, what do we say? We're doing just fine. Fine, yeah. fine. And I, here's what fine is. Feelings I'm not expressing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, or, or fearful, insecure, uh, needy, and emotionally exhausted. And, and so when I hear people say fine in the church, I say, okay, now tell me how you're really doing. And, and that's where I think the church misses it. We let the fine conversation go by. Everybody's doing fine. But if we really, really look deep in their soul, we would know, hey, I know I got issues. And, and don't give me the fine answer. We, I'm, I'm your brother. I'm yeah. your sister. I'm your friend. I'm a safe, I'm a safe person to reveal yourself to. And let's, and let's, and let's, uh, let's 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 not just pray for Aunt Susie's cancer. Let's pray for what's going on in your heart. And when people do that, oh man, it it becomes a game changer. Yeah, yeah. Taking that first step, I think once you can get past that. Uh, but I, I think it's important. Would you say to find the right accountability Absolutely. partners? You can't share with everybody. Absolutely, and and and. Uh, but here's what I discovered: when you have that two or three or four that you are really uh, having an iron sharpening iron relationship with, what happens is even those outside of that inner circle, you'll find yourself wanting to go deeper with them too. Yeah, your the quantity and quality of your friendships increase as a result of the intimate encounters you have with a handful very prominent uh, businessman that, that I know of. And if I mention his name, you probably know him. Many of our listeners would. Uh, his, his family has had a, a, an impact on, on, on the world in their, in their business. And I remember hearing him speak one time, 
and he started talking about this group of about five or six men. They've been meeting now for about 30 years, yep. and they pray together, and you know, and they're accountable to each other. And I'm wondering if that part of the success of how this company has been so world renowned and not necessarily, but I mean, you know, there's some, there's some, there's something to it, not, not doing it so that you'll, that you'll be rich or, you know, the benefit, but there are certain benefits to being accountable. Oh man. I, I, I talk about the, the depth of your friendships. You're going to grow in your Christian faith. You're going to live by your priorities. You're going to have a support system. You're going to, you're going to have a peace in your life. I mean, think about those are all kind of intangibles, but you put those all together and and your experience and the freedom and the the blessing you're you're able to be totally who God's created you to be and without without kind of looking over your shoulder and wondering am I going to be found out today and yeah. and 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 that is what I re, I believe the Lord's referring to as the abundant life you can now experience the abundant life that Christ promises so it does I don't know who you're talking about but I can probably pigeonhole about Dozens and dozens of other people I know who same thing, and the secret of their success is that inner core group of people that they're aligned with, and they are doing life with, and 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 and, and they're experiencing all the kind of things I just talked about. Right, our time on the program here is slipping away. We're going to have to say goodbye, but but before we do, uh, you've written some twenty books. Uh, how do you keep up with all those titles? Well, um, uh, the last 16 years, I've written books for Fellowship of Christian Athletes, their summer camp program. So it's a, it's, it's a team study on character series, and we actually uh, uh, put some, uh, some meat on the bone for them and every summer to ch- just give them what they need in terms of that. So the last book was called Rise. It just came out a couple weeks ago. And, uh, and we're, we're, as far as I know, the foreseeable future, we'll continue to do that for them. Our, our main book is called Character Counts, Who's Counting Yours. It's a book about how the hows and whys of accountability. It's our lead book. It's uh, the one that uh, when I get a chance to do just a single event, that's the book I'll land on. And then, and then we have a book called Life in View of Eternity, which is a just a power-packed book of, of character principles. And that's the book that we've actually have begun to translate into some foreign languages and help some other countries. So really? uh, the, in Haiti, it was translating to Creole. And uh, here's a cool God story. Uh, 400,000 Haitians in the last five years have been through that book. I'm going back this summer. Well, repeat that number again. Yeah, 400,000. Oh, my. They printed 50,000 copies, but there's so few books actually done in the language. that, And so people share their books. They pass on their books. They reread the books. And so I trained 75 leaders three years ago, and we're going back uh, in a few months to train another batch of leaders to – uh, to get to hopefully a million Haitians, uh, and 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 you talk about a country that's messed up. I mean, we think in America it's messed up. They're really they got challenges, super big challenges. So, so to so to, so to take these materials to that country is uh, pretty thrilling. And here's a cool part: I'm taking my kids with me too. Are and, you? Yeah. So they're 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 stoked about it. They're ready to go. They went early on the earlier trips. They're going to go this year as well as well. Okay, now if folks want more information about uh, Character That Counts, uh, how they might have you come and speak, or other information about the ministry, I know you have a website, of course. CharacterThatCounts.org, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're responding to things every day in terms of uh, speaking and book sales and all kinds of stuff. Our most, our most requested resource is our accountability question cards. We've got men cards, women cards, and teenager cards. And then we also provide couples questions for, for couples to do accountability as well. And uh, I don't even have an estimate about how many hundreds of thousands of cards we've given away over the last 16 years. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. I like what you said. You're motivated by life change. There's nothing more exciting to see somebody's life come alive in Jesus Christ. Even a, a follower of Christ is seeing the value and what God wants to do in their life and, and, and how character and being vulnerable, as you mentioned, and transparent with uh, some accountability can totally transform an individual. Yeah, I, I, love, I love life change, and I also use the word game changer. It's a game changer, yeah. accountability is. Hey, i got to ask you one question before we say goodbye. And uh, as, as you look at uh, in, in the locker room and, you know, as you have this, uh, and I know, I know I've had other friends that are chaplains for major sports teams, and I know there's, there's, there's a confidence there, and I'm, I don't want to break that. But when it comes to... You know, the character issues, when you look at the kind of contract some of these guys sign, 
and uh, the maturity level that's there. I mean, how do you try to help keep them, you know, <laughs> you know, walk in that character line when they're facing these, you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of contracts? It's not just the dollars uh, involved. It's also the the sexual opportunities that they have. That the fame, are, just the, the fame, fame in general, and the yeah. everything is just. And and you're right. At such a young age, it takes an incredible maturity, and it and it takes and the and the guys that are doing it right, and there are some that are doing it very very right, are the ones that will will say once again, Rod, help me. Uh, I'm not going to do this by myself. I'm not because because here's here's the sad stat that they don't people don't like to tell you. After a professional athlete retires within three years, 80% are bankrupt and also divorced. Wow. And so their relational world and their financial world. And so we try to say, let's get ahead of the curve and let's begin to build uh, uh, some discipline, some self-control, some some consistency while, while you've got the resources in hand so that you don't become the next statistic or casualty. And so that's that's we're really trying to get on the front end of that because it is it – is, as much as we think that's a wonderful world, the backside of that is really harsh. Wow. Rod Handley, God bless you, my dear brother. Thank you for what you're doing for Christ's kingdom. Thanks for stopping by our Bot Radio Network station today here in Memphis, sharing with us uh, your vision, your passion for character that counts. You're welcome. Friends, that's all the time we have on this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I'm Byron Tyler. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.